few months ago, Attorney General William French Smith and his staff, in collaboration with the Treasury Department, put together final plans for a national strategy to expose, prosecute, and ultimately cripple organized crime in America. The Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force, or OSINEF, was created by presidential order four decades ago, bringing prosecutors and law enforcement agencies together to attack the command and control elements of the drug trafficking organizations that were moving massive amounts of illicit narcotics into the country. The strength of the OSINEF program is in its governance. OSINEF prosecutors in every judicial district lead OSINEF designated law enforcement agents and analysts. In all 94 districts, we have groups that nest under nine OSINEF regional directors who with supervisory agents direct targeting efforts and manage resources, driving a nationwide task force towards national impacts. It's truly the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. Criminals are doing the same thing they did 40 years ago. They're just using technologies and new tools to be more efficient. Some of the most striking evolutions, I think in the past 40 years, um, as far as financial crimes go, is that money laundering services have really evolved into a standalone business, separate and apart from the uh, criminal enterprises that are actually generating the illegal profits. And then most recently, with digital assets and the anonymous nature of those types of financial transactions, that's really evolved uh, too over the past 40 years. OCDF has furthered law enforcement efforts to dismantle criminal enterprises, uh, not only to go after the criminal enterprise, but, but the actual uh, profits generated from this illicit activity. This has proven to be successful because if you only go after the criminal enterprise without going after the profits that are generated from illicit activity, then organizations can recuperate and continue to generate profit and continue the illicit activity. Criminals don't pay attention to rules, boundaries, and they have no limits based on organizational structure. By, uh, by utilizing the OCDF strike force model and joining forces, we're able to more uh, nimbly combat them and go after them in a more organized and robust fashion. It's really allowed us to put more and increased focus on violent grand, uh, gang activity in the United States. Example of that is a, an operation we started in 2016 targeting MS-13 gangs and uh, working in the Northern Triangle, specifically El Salvador. That also led to a collaboration where we would bring, we put agents through that uh, experience in the Northern Triangle in El Salvador helping uh, address MS-13 concerns in conjunction with FBI and other partners. Uh, but it also led to bringing partners back to the United States from El Salvador so they would help domestically to address the gang problems here. None of that would have really been possible without the collaboration and the mechanisms that OCDEF provided. In addition to that, we've also been able to initiate some violent crime uh, task forces throughout domestic U.S. cities and uh, that's all been facilitated by OCDEF. It was a logical step for us to join OCDEF. OCDEF model of a prosecutor-led multi-agency platform allows us to better coordinate these cases between OSADEF and the United States Postal Inspection Service. I'm very pleased with the collaboration with the Department of Justice and OSADEF. It's a very collaborative relationship and it's been a win-win for our organization and we've made some tremendous progress. The OSADEF strike forces are absolutely a force multipliers that help protect the, the American people. As we uh, bring those forces together through the strike forces and do interdictions at sea, it's life-saving work, it is uh, drugs that do not reach our shore, and it's overdoses that don't occur in our cities and states. And no one agency has all of the authority and all of the resourcing that they need uh, to counter the, the threats, and so uh, OCDF helps bring, again, an alignment of authorities and capabilities together in a way that counters uh, the, the illicit activity of the, uh, of the networks, right? The network gets a vote, but uh, our competitive advantage is, uh, is working together collaboratively, and OCDEF is a, a key enabler of that. President Biden's National Drug Control Strategy guides federal drug policy and a response to the drug threat in both public health and law enforcement. The mandate from the president is clear. Reduce the number of drug overdose deaths, put quality public health services within reach for people with substance use disorder, and stop the drug trafficking organizations that seek profits by harming Americans. Our country saw more than 100,000 deaths from drug overdoses last year. This is a historic and complex problem 
that requires a comprehensive response. And that's where OSADEF comes in. The professionals of OSADEF have harnessed the resources and expertise of agencies across the country and across all levels of government to collect critical intelligence, build better cases, and take apart transnational criminal organizations. This work is difficult and time-consuming. It calls for constant adaptation in our responses to the ever-changing tactics of complex criminal networks, and it requires true commitment to the cause. I am proud to recognize the professionals of OSADEF for the demanding and often dangerous work they do day in and day out to keep our communities and our country safe. And I am extremely grateful for their dedication, their service, and their sacrifice. My hope for OSADEF's future is that we will keep building on the really solid foundation that's been built over the last 40 years, the partnerships that have been built over the last 40 years, and evolve with the threats. If you think about the ways in which the threats have evolved over the last 40 years, you know, we saw the mafia cases, we saw street gangs, we saw drug trafficking organizations and money laundering organizations, and the threat's going to keep evolving, so OSADEF needs to keep evolving. In particular, technology is, is moving in a way which is going to make it harder for everyone if we don't keep upping our game. And it's going to make it harder to find the bad guy, it's going to make it harder to find the evidence, to follow the money, to disrupt the threat. And these are challenges that cut really across all law enforcement programs, I'm talking about uh, warrant-proof encryption and our ability to access the electronic evidence that we need lawfully. I'm talking about cryptocurrency and the ability to follow the money. And I'm talking about ubiquitous technical surveillance and our ability to recruit and retain human sources. You put those three things together uh, and it's going to be a challenge for OSADEF, just like it is for law enforcement everywhere, uh, to disrupt the threat. So we have to keep innovating, we have to keep doubling down, tripling down on the partnerships that we have uh, and trying to think about where the threats are going to be 5, 10, 15 years from now, uh, not just tomorrow. Uh, if there's one thing I'm sure of is that OSADEF will be a, an integral, indispensable part of all of that. As OSADEF begins our 41st year, we will be laser focused on the broader transnational organized crime mission. We'll continue to hone our priority targeting efforts, relying on OSADEF leaders in the United States Attorney's offices, using the national and regional targeting processes to guide our resourcing, and we'll expand our PTOC program to address growing transnational organized crime threats. OSADEF is a synchronizer to lead smart, creative law enforcement agents to get after and solve the problems at hand. OSADEF will continue to provide a forward-leaning structure for our partners to work together and leverage each other's strengths.